And even though the brand's total spend on the personalized promos was 30% less, the redemption was 4x as high. What interests me is just how broken it is. You know, it's pretty yeah. insane. We could go on your computer right now, look at 20 different loyalty programs across any industry. They're basically all the same exact thing. Gaming and social apps are a really good place to start as ways to look at like influencing the future of your loyalty strategy. All right. I've got my drink. Uh, Matt, thank you for taking the time out of what is probably a hectic schedule. Yeah, no worries. Have to be here. No, it's perfect. Is this your first shop talk or have you, you been to the show before? So the company is only a few years old. I was here last year, but didn't actually attend the event. And this year I'm a speaker. So they kind of just gave me this free pass. I said, why not? Amazing. Perfect. Well, this is our first and it's, it's really cool to be here. How's it been? Um, well, I mean, we got in last night at 9 p.m. And uh, we've been in here recording episodes all day. So it's been it's been really cool. It's been really awesome. cool. Um, brilliant. So... I guess to start off with, do you want to give us a whistle-stop tour of who you are, what you're all about, and what, what Hang is? Yeah, definitely. I'm the, my name is Matt. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Hang. We're really trying to revolutionize loyalty um, through bringing in kind of this next generation of loyalty programs and software. And, you know, we, we really do think of ourselves as something larger than that, just kind of the future of digital experience for brands, almost like a more interactive CRM, just thinking, you know, if you look at CRMs today, they're pretty passive in what they can do in regards to just looking at user data or maybe sending a text or an email. Whereas we believe that there is just so much out there that can be done um, when you think about the fact that the steward of a relationship at a brand is a marketer and they're just very limited in how they can actually interact with the customer. And so we really have to think about ourselves as really injecting this new concept of, of what digital experience really could be across the board for a brand. Yep. But starting with loyalty, just given the fact that, you know, we could become a marketer's best friend and fully integrate with their entire stack. That's amazing. And what, what's your background prior to uh, starting Hang? So this company has been through a few different lives. Okay. Um, so before this version, it was something else. I had a business in the live event, but, uh, this company in the live event industry that was killed by COVID. Oh, As a result of that, um, had to start something else that eventually morphed into this. Before that, I was working at a kind of like large fund doing investments into venture capital and private equity funds, some direct stuff. And before that was a trader at a prop shop in a big bank. Wow. Okay. So quite a varied career so far. Yeah, definitely. Been been on, out on my own on, on this kind of journey for like six years now. So That's really I don't, cool. don't even remember it before that. That's really cool. So what is it about customer loyalty that interests you? What interests me is just how broken it is. You know, it's pretty okay. insane. We could go on your computer right now, look at 20 different loyalty programs across any industry. They're basically all the same exact thing. There's been literally no innovation in decades. And it kind of, we think about it in three sort of areas. One is just the fact that these programs are not engaging. It's the same spend money, earn points, get a reward over and over again. Super transactional, takes forever to level up. And no one in their right mind has ever like cared about points. It's just such like a passive random thing. And so we try to take inspiration from categories like mobile gaming, where you level up in seconds and minutes, not weeks and months. And you get okay. dopamine hits through animations and rewards that are actually valuable in the game. You know, I'm a Delta SkyMiles person, but it's me and an airline. In a game, it's all the customers playing together and competing against each other. And, you know, that's just a big piece of it. I mean, another thing is that, you know, we live in a world now that's becoming more personalized by the second. My YouTube account knows more about me than I know about myself, but loyalty programs give everybody the same exact experience, rewards, and offers. And this is wild. Why not actually, at a, you know, in a scalable manner, give each customer things that they care about based on their unique preferences and, and past history? And then the third piece is just that, you know, loyalty programs have historically been built around one single channel, so they can operate within that one single channel decently well. But the truth is, in today's world, your customers are actually buying from you and interacting with you across a number of channels, whether it be third-party products or platforms, social media, you name it. And so the ability to run a proper loyalty program or one that can actually be optimized means that you actually have to meet your customer wherever they are. And if you can only attribute one channel, then good luck having success. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Why, why do you think it is broken? Why is it that, in your experience, the brands that you're working with within your business, what state are they in when you, when you get to them? And why do you think it is that sometimes it's left on the table as almost an afterthought or like, oh, we've just got to plug this thing in and we should get a loyalty program, put one up. And I'm, I'm not saying it's that blase, but it's, it's, there's probably a lot of other stuff that comes before it, right? Totally. So we kind of work with companies in a few different stages. One is 
there's a shocking amount of large businesses or at least like growing businesses that don't have programs yet. So we can actually start fresh, which is always nice. Yeah. Um, we can transition a large program over from their existing solution or, or system, or we can integrate and work, you know, within a brand's program as is. I think the truth is for the longest time, Everyone always has said the retention is so important, but no one actually really cares. When you look at brands for so many years, you can just easily acquire users via Facebook ads and these other kind of like, you know, cheaper marketing solutions. And as a result, if you lost a customer, who cares? You just could bring another one in. And so I think there just wasn't such an emphasis on loyalty. And what's happened really over the past couple of years is as acquisition costs have basically skyrocketed as a result of changes to privacy and cookie policies at these large tech companies, oh. these, it's left brands saying, hey, we actually now need to find a way to offset this increase in CAC. And the best way to do that is to increase lifetime value. And loyalty is supposed to do that. So let's look at these programs. And the truth is, these programs just don't move the needle enough. Maybe at one point they did, but now when you think about that delta that you have to come make up for, like good luck. And so I think there just hasn't been a lot of innovation in this space because it hasn't been much of a priority. On top of the fact that I think brand marketers are just like, in many cases, very... Um, limited in what they can actually control from the user experience. Kind of like what I said before, uh -huh. beyond just sending an email or text, there's not much they can do. And when you look at a large brand's development roadmap, good luck adding new things to it. So as a result, mm -hmm. it just hasn't been like a hot topic until now. And now that there is an impetus and a need, I think people are starting to rethink what's, what's out there. It's a really good point. It's probably more needed now than ever, right? Because you've got, yeah, the cost to acquire a customer on Google Ads or meta routes or whatever channel like you say skyrocketed over the last two years you've also got a relatively uh difficult economic environment you know where it's harder to convert customers than it was three years ago um and e-commerce is really interesting because covid was a boom for e-commerce and now it's tricky in quite a lot of e-com sectors so it's really about making the money on that second purchase isn't it totally and, and more Totally. I think like e-com specifically, and now we work across a number of industries. We work with QSR and restaurant chains, sports teams, um, e-com and retail are areas that were are really close to us. And that's you know, why I'm here. I think when you look at e-com loyalty, you know, most specifically, um, every single program out there does this one thing really wrong. And it's just the sheer fact that e-com loyalty is built around the post-purchase experience. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you go to a website and you make a purchase and you get the reward after the fact. To your point, the whole point, the whole thing about loyalty is you're supposed to drive users back. And when you get a reward after the fact and it's a coffee shop in your neighborhood, you can come back tomorrow or next week. But for an e-com site where you're only making four purchases a year maybe, you're not going to come back next week. And what's going to happen is you're going to come back in four months on your own volition. And you're going to see that you have that reward and then you're going to use it. And so it was supposed to be the thing driving you back to create that incremental purchase actually becomes a cost center. And no one in their right mind has ever gone to a website and said, oh, I get 10 points if I add this thing to my cart and 20 <laughs> points over here. And so it just, you know, I think that e-com specifically is just so broken for that reason. And a big thing that we're trying to do is control loyalty at the time when the brand actually has you, which is while you're shopping and optimize the shopping experience so that, okay. you know, we're trying to get users to add more things to their cart. Yeah, yeah. And when they do that, we give them some sort of reward or animation that shows that. Okay. Have you got any more practical examples of that? Because I think it's really interesting, um, like what you're you're doing there, and like yeah, any examples of uh, projects you worked on that you've seen work really well, or some big wins in that area? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a number of them. So basically, like at a higher level, the way that brands traditionally will look at loyalty effectiveness is by looking at users in your loyalty cohort, mm -hmm. comparing them against users who are not. And McKinsey will show you that the golden standard benchmark, the top tier programs out there will increase spend for users in loyalty by 15 to 25% versus those who are not. Wow. Okay. We increase it by like three to four X, but I think that's a terrible way to think about loyalty because you're essentially taking your best customers and putting them against your worst. We instead try to be really incremental with everything that we're doing and, and a little bit more like intellectually honest. And so we're actually looking at users in a loyalty program and comparing them spend to themselves before they join the program. True okay. apples to apples. When we do that, we see that we can increase spend by over 50% per user net of rewards. That's amazing. And so we can do that for a number of reasons. And I think like that's the higher level, but more practically, like for e-com, we have these little gift boxes where 
it's it's super native to your experience. It feels totally on brand. You don't see it until you click something. And the moment you click that first item, you see this box appear. Okay. And it's a present that we're going to give you, that the brand will give you when you make a purchase. But it shows you if you add five more dollars or if you add another item, the box is going to get bigger. And the moment you click it, you see the box transform and it changes. And these oh, wow. rewards kind of go into it. And in doing that, again, we're really kind of helping the pre-purchase experience mm -hmm. to get users to increase their cart size. And, you know, we think that tangible rewards themselves and these animations and experiences that are visceral and easy, they're easier and more memorable than points. And in gaming, a big thing, uh, the biggest driver of action in gaming is this loop, it's a concept called a loot box, which is you come back to the app, you beat the level, you take this action, you get this box. And it's no, you know, some social apps do it, Duolingo, stuff like that. And you open the box and it's this awesome animation and it's one of five to 100 different benefits that can actually be used in the game not so different than the slot machines downstairs. Yeah. And so we have found that stuff like this works really well. So in the case of the gift box, now when you go to actually make that purchase, you can open the box and you have this cool animation. It's one of you know 50 different rewards. And on our side, we're automatically optimizing ROI for that brand. So all the brand has to do is give us the reward rate that they want to put out there, the list of rewards and the margin, and the system will intelligently change the probabilities of those rewards based on your That's preferences so and who you are and at the program level what's happening, which is why our ROI is so high. That's amazing. So it's a deeply personalized approach. Yeah. I mean, like the way that brands think about even forget loyalty, like a lot of the features that we've built just work generally well across like a brand's business. When you look at promotion spend. Brands will give everybody the same promotions. If we all join some brands' website right now, we're going to get the same promotions. And the truth is, when you give everyone the same promotions, you spend too much money because we all have a different perceived value based on what's important to mm -hmm. us. And so we've done a number of experiments with promotions where leveraging you know, this personalization ML that we built, our system will intelligently distribute promotions to each user based on what they like. And basically, a brand can just give us a budget. And what we did most recently in the latest case study, we showed that you know there was a cohort of users who got the personalization ML infused rewards or, or promos rather, and there was a cohort that just got traditional uh, promos. And even though the brand's total spend on the personalized promos was 30% less, the redemption was 4x as high. Mm. So pretty meaningful stuff. You know, That's we're right. all different people. Yeah, yeah. And when you think about loyalty 30 years ago. It wasn't about a discount. It was about that person behind the counter knowing your name or your order. And how can we bring that back today? Yeah, that's really cool. So if e-com is a bit broken when it comes to loyalty, are there any sectors that are doing really well that people could look at to learn from? Yeah, so I, I don't think it's an e-com only problem. I think there are things with e-com that are inherently worse just because the frequency is so much lower. But if you look at any of these programs across restaurants or sports or retail, I think it's kind of the same problem regardless. At least e-com has the benefit that so many of your orders will come through your one store. Whereas in the restaurant world, you have 30% orders going through DoorDash or Burrits or a lot of these CPG companies that may have an e-com store. They sell a lot through retail and third parties. That being said, I don't really think anyone does loyalty very well, but the category that I think everyone should take notice of are mobile games. Okay. That's a category, again, where like the retention is incredibly high. And you give out, you know, the brands aren't really giving much, the games aren't really giving much in rewards that have tangible value or cost. Like, games are incredible at creating reward sets that have a high perceived value, but a very low cost. You unlock a new level that you can play. You get uh, a status or you get, you know, some sort of digital apparel. Even, honestly, like McDonald's Monopoly did this really well, where... You get Park Place and you feel like you're halfway to a million dollars, yeah. but you never get Boardwalk. So I think like games are, gaming and social apps are a really good place to start as ways to look at like influencing the future of your loyalty strategy. That's amazing. Well, look, Matt, thank you so much. And where can people go and find you? Give yourself a plug. Definitely. So yeah, um, we're at hang.com. Check us out there. You can find me, Matt Smolin, on LinkedIn or on Twitter at estimated with two Ts, estimated. Thanks. Amazing. By the way, that's such a great domain name. Yeah, we got the <laughs> dot com like six months That's ago really and it's good. been amazing. That's really good. Thank anyway, you. thank you, Matt. All right. Have a good one.